Hi, I'm, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com. I, I think you can probably tell I'm having an awful lot of fun with my Lion King mask. I just now finally got them done, as a matter of fact. And in this video, I want to show you the very last thing I did, which was to dye some natural raffia so that Scar would have a darker mane than Simba. <laughs> These masks are all made with patterns, just like all of the animals up here. I've got a ton of patterns now out on my website. These are going to be available out at ultimatepapermache.com slash Lion King. They'll be all one word. You just print them out on uh, full sheet labels, put them on cardboard. This fellow here took five cereal boxes to get enough cardboard for his head and for the back. I used one layer of paper mache and I showed you in a different video how I did that. I used wood glue and brown paper, one layer. It's really strong and extremely light, so that worked out really, really well. This is natural raffia. I wanted it to be a little bit darker, so I used some writ dye. It was really easy, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Now, his pattern is different because I wanted him, I wanted Scar's face to have a different shape than Simba's uh, face. Um, he's got a nice open expression, a real kind and gentle guy, you know, and Scar is not. He's mean and, and perpetually angry. So I wanted that to show up in the pattern itself. But even though the shape of his face is different and his character is different, I still wanted to make it really obvious from the you know, 15 feet away when you're in the audience, I wanted to be really, really clear who's who. So I wanted his mane to be a different, different color. They're both made out of natural raffia. It's uh, this is what it looks like when I when you get it out of the package. It's pretty cool. Um, this is a tiki bar fringe. I got it from Amazon.com. 24 feet long. So this one package would be enough oh, for at least four big male lions. For some reason this raffia is softer than the raffia I bought a long time ago. Um, this this guy is a much bigger pattern, very different. Um, and I, I do have natural raffia for him too, but it's stiffer for some reason. So it's all going to be just a little bit different. Uh, I, I really like this because it hangs really nice. Now I haven't actually cut the lower edge of Scar's mane, and I'm, I'm not even entirely sure I'm going to. I kind of like it this way, but let me know what you think. <laughs> In order to get this to look like this, you do need to dye it. It's really, really easy, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now, so let's go ahead and get to it. I've got two gallons of water in here, and I used warm water from the tap. I am using gloves because I don't want my hands to turn brown. I've got one cup of salt here that I'm going to be adding to the water. Sort of, more or less. I'm using a dark brown writ liquid dye. I'm just shaking it. And I'm going to use about half of it if I can. Now also I should mention, if I wasn't going to replace this carpet really soon, I would have plastic all over the place or I would do this outside. I'm just going to mix it up so that that salt gets mixed in. Put my raffia in there. I'll probably use more water than I need to. And according to the website, you have to keep stirring it for 10 minutes. Of course, they were expecting you to dye some fabric. It's only been in there for about four minutes, maybe tops, but it is starting to get pretty dark. And... I think I'm going to let it stop right there. I'm going to take it outside and hang it up on the fence. Now I'm just going to leave it here. We've got a nice breeze. I'm going to take the dogs for a walk. And it should be dry in a couple of hours. It only took about an hour for this to dry. That's, that was pretty fast. But it was out in the sun and the wind was blowing, so that goes pretty quickly. I need to decide if it's actually the right color. I think it's going to work. It's a little darker than I had actually intended to make it. 
I could probably have gotten away with just like two or three minutes and it would have been a nice soft light brown but this is going to be pretty striking so I'm I'm happy with it now what we need to do is attach it to the back now you do need to lay it down very softly on the table because you don't want to scratch the paint if you want you could actually put down a pillow and then some fabric over it just to make sure that it stays nice I'm Kind of pushing it here pressing my luck by not doing that but i'm really anxious to get this guy done just putting a lot of glue on there keeping my fingers out of it hopefully now it is much smarter of course to use some sort of wooden tool i should have had one out before i started this i'm going to go get one now I'm going to make two runs with this, but I'm going to put them on separately. Two layers, I guess I should say. I'm putting on lots of glue so that it will stick to both the, uh, the cardboard and to the raffia that's under it. It just seemed to stand up a little bit better when I did it that way with Simba. Wow, I almost don't want to cut it. <laughs> that is kind of cool. I see short ones like this do stand up by themselves, which is kind of cool. I'm leaving this way longer than I did Simba's mane, but I really like it, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to cut the rest of it or not. Let me know what you think down below. Now, I've also got some more videos about this series of masks that I want to show you, too, so be sure that you watch for those. I'll put links to them down below. Now, remember, if you volunteered to make all of the lines for the Lion King play, you can find these patterns now on my website, ultimatepapermache.com slash Lion King. So go check those out, then go make something, and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.